All right, let's take a look at example 8.3. <clears throat> uh, they call it the, the spring-loaded pop gun. Uh, it could be a marble launcher or something that may be used in lab. Um, like I have some Star Wars ships that have like little missiles that pop out when you push a button. Right? Um, all that is is a spring-loaded mechanism that shoots out a mass. So I can literally take this, maybe, I might do it actually, uh, figure out the the mass of one of my missiles for one of my Star Wars ships that I have and take it to school tomorrow and get an accurate measurement and we could solve this problem. <clears throat> and what is the problem? Uh, what's, what is the constant of the spring? If it goes some distance, H. Some distance h high. All right, so uh, state we'll call that state two, all the way up here, all the way at the top. Um, it's state one. The mass is going to be below what we what I would call the equilibrium line, um, and I'll I'll show you why when we start looking at the energies. But um, the equilibrium line or this y is equal to zero would represent when there is no spring stretch anymore or compression in this case. All the compression is gone. Um, all of that energy has turned into kinetic energy and has fought against a little bit of work. There's, We're going to have a minus mgh term for right here. We can call that h1. But let's figure it out. Uh, what What is the spring constant if it goes some distance h high? Well, I would say the potential energy initial plus the kinetic energy, or we could say at one, is equal to the potential energy at two plus the kinetic energy at two. Start listing them off. Um, we have some mg h1. That's going to be a negative value. And we have... If it's at rest, our kinetic energy is zero, but we have some other potential, right? We have a spring potential, one half k x one squared. So if this was the equilibrium position, then this would be the distance x one, the amount compressed. All that is going to turn into some. Uh, we could, we could take this problem in two directions. We could figure out what the velocity is right as it exits. So all of that energy would be turning into 1 half mv final squared. 1 half mv at 2 squared. And we could solve for the velocity. So we could hold on to that problem. We'll, we'll do that. But we could also say that this mgh1, where this is also negative, Um, plus whatever the spring is compressed, that's always a positive value, uh, turns into some mgh. That's what we're looking for. Um, how high does it go? Um, mass is not in every term, so we can't just cancel it out. Um, so how high does it go? Let's solve this for h. We get h is equal to, um, this is h2. h2 is equal to mg, whatever our displacement was for h1. It was in the negative direction because we pushed it down from what we called y is equal to zero plus one half kx one squared, the spring energy term, all divided by mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And if I wanted to know how fast it was going right when it left the barrel, we would just say that the potential is zero there, right? Y is equal to zero, so mgh right there would equal zero also. So it would be all it'll be all kinetic energy and we'd say from equation number one the mgh1 plus the spring term is all going to turn into one half mv at two uh, I wouldn't call that at two let's call this at three right at the equilibrium point the velocity at three squared and we can solve that for the velocity so I would have mgh1 plus one half kx1 squared is equal to the velocity 
we would divide by the mass and multiply all this by 2 and take the square root. So that's how fast it's leaving the barrel. So um, th this makes problems very easy. We didn't even look at the actual force involved, right? We just looked at how much it was displaced. Uh, didn't need a free body diagram on this really, right? We just looked at what kind of energies there were. Was it in, it, was it changing position in the y direction? Well, then we have potential energy changes. Was the speed changing? But yep, we had kinetic energy changes. Was there a spring? If there was, and there was, then we have uh, a potential energy in the spring change. Um, so in this case, we can say the spring did work. We can say that uh, the gravity actually did work on us. And we can say that um, that's it. Um, I'm sure there's some other conclusions, but the, gra the work by gravity would be negative. It would slow us down to a stop, right? We get our maximum height when the kinetic energy was at zero, right? The kinetic energy went to zero for the max height. Kind of like when we did the kinematic equations before, we said that at the top of the trajectory or um, if we lob something up in the air, um, it comes to rest for an instant and then turns back around and comes the other direction. So same thing. If that speed goes to zero, the kinetic energy term goes to zero. We're left with only gravitational potential then.